isn't California in perpetual drought? Yeah. Yeah. Seems like there's a bunch of water right there. I don't know. Well, but it's the the drought is mostly from agriculture. Okay. So there it's the Colorado know. River and they divert it into the agriculture, right? So it takes like an immense amount. You couldn't really bring it from the ocean because you would have to pump it uphill. So really it's coming down from the Sierras, right? It's coming down from the snow melt in the Sierras and it comes down the Colorado River. We and just, they, as it comes down, they just peel it off. We just need to get in contact with the same demons the Romans were and figure out how they got their water from place to place because I'm pretty sure they figured that out, but that's neither here nor there. everyone and welcome to the royal path i am your host andrew and today let's be silly gentlemen not serious but what is a pet peeve of you cyprian or father turbo that uh that people do not be silly you know it's not like a it doesn't have to be like a, a real thing like someone chews too loudly next to you or something Well, I can go first. Go ahead. Hot dogs. Uh, what'd you say, Father? Ketchup on hot dogs. Ketchup on hot dogs. Oh, you yeah. don't like ketchup on hot dogs? Yeah, it's weird. Wow, that's 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 a terrible pet peeve to have. Since considering that's like the prime condi condiment, is it called the condiment? It's a condiment. The prime condiment that people are that people put on hot dogs, isn't it? Ketchup. Well, everything else I'll turn into a serious sin. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's left. <laughs> <laughs> what about yours andrew well no i i want to dive into this hot dog thing really quick um so what do you like on your hot dog father anything mustard? Like mustard? Anything, mustard anything but mayonnaise and ketchup so. now who puts mayonnaise on a hot dog yeah some people do that so. i've seen it I think, I think i know one specific person you know that does it but maybe maybe i don't know um, i think Okay, do you put the condiments underneath the meat, Father, between the bun and the meat, or do you put it on top of everything? Yeah, I put it on top, but it's just practical. I don't really have a, a method to it, you know, unfortunately. Too much of a glutton, I guess. <laughs> you just gotta I, can, I, can, I can understand this thing with the, you know, mustard. I think mustard is the right go, because I prefer a sausage to a hot dog. Me too. Myself. And in that case, yeah, I definitely want to go mustard. I just actually found out not too long ago that I am heavily Prussian. Like my family is very Prussian. And uh, I love, and it makes sense because I love sauerkraut, sauerkraut. And sausages and like mustard, like whatever palate that is, I'm just totally down with it. Mm -hmm. I just like uh, man brought, is like if I had to have a last meal, a brat would definitely be on there, like a big old, a big old honker. I do not like dr like a uh, drama. That's like a real pet peeve of mine. If you were to lose me in like a conversation, yeah, I don't like drama either. But that's a serious thing. That's not jokey. That yeah, drama, no drama six ships. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's dial it back then a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I see what father's saying. Okay. So yeah, that is a bit too serious. Uh, I don't get mayonnaise on burgers unless, mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. there's bacon on it. If there's bacon on the burger, I'm totally down for mayonnaise. Like I don't like, like mm. I know my wife really likes mayonnaise on burgers. Every time I make burgers, she puts mayonnaise on hers and I just don't like the taste of it. I just, I, I'm, I'm down on mayonnaise any other time, but I don't like it when it's just a burger with mayonnaise on it. Like the other day, um, I was eating uh, 
like a sandwich and like i was like boy what would this sandwich be without mayo like i love me some mm, mayo. Mm. but like on a burger for some reason it's different like i just don't know what it is like it's like the same thing of like just sitting down to eat a sandwich versus eating a hamburger it's just two different experiences and once you throw mayonnaise into that burger experience and just you lost me i'm just not into it so you know what's weird i can't really think of a pet of, of a pet peeve i mean i have some pet peeves but they're like they're more like professional pet peeves they're well, not you know so they're not real like jokey and they're totally like no maybe some people would relate who, who are in software development profession. Of course, we all like, everybody's got professional pet peeves, right? Every, every professional's got those, but like food, these types of things, things that people, things that people might do. I don't have any like really? little, little quirks of language and things like that. No, I'm pretty, I'm pretty chill, that's man. So that's why you're free. <laughs> <laughs> I it I, it might be it might be I think um Dude, yeah I just I just you? let it go does it bother you when people say I gotta itch I gotta itch my, I gotta itch myself like no they're like going to scratch oh, themselves yeah. they say nope. I gotta itch myself no nope. no the way I the way I look at language is if I can under if I can understand your meaning to the degree that I need it in that moment we're good it served its purpose that's a, that like. It's like I understood what you meant to the because there's various degrees of needing it, right? Like yeah. in a professional context, you're gonna have to, you know, I'm expecting you to step it up a little bit, give me a little jargon, you know, whatever, so that I can really understand it. But if you say I, I need to itch myself, that's I understood exactly what you mean. You know what I, I mean? Like it's perfectly fine. I knew somebody that used to make that person so mad. And I was like, I don't know why. It must have had to do something with because they're born in they're raised in southern missouri and they escaped mm. that or they thought they escaped that so they must it must just be like a thing where like pride home pride oh, pride could be pride yeah you know what's interesting while we're talking about language real quick and i was Please. originally came up with this when i was trying to vamp for father being off camera but i'm going to say it anyway i work a lot with felons people straight mm. out of directions and mm -hmm. i picked up on some of their lingo and i use it now like um there's like uh, that people say woo woo, like there's a little bit of woo woo going on over there. Woo, woo. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I didn't know about woo woo. And but like they're like, you know, they're like woo woo in the back seat, and like like going like this means that they're doing some drug or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I also have been saying females. I mean, like, so then some little female comes along and it's just I say that. I I've never said that in my entire I, life. I say that I started working with people from corrections. And it's like I'm the whitest person you will one of the whitest people you will ever meet. And I find that actually that usually makes people more comfortable. Is that a is that a hood thing? To I use think, to say to say females? Is that a hood thing? Because I do that. Like, but I'll I'll do that in all kinds of company. And now it's got me a little self-conscious that like, oh, are people like, oh, is he from the hood? Right? Let's go. You ever spend time in corrections? Oh yeah, I've you know, <laughs> I've, not not very long, not very long. Let's yeah. just say that you know, not not long enough for any anything to any cultural things to sink in. But I've definitely spent a lot of time around people who have spent a long time in sure. correction. Let's put it like that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I I don't know. Like maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never really picked up on stuff like that because. Typically, especially if I'm talking to a black dude, mm -hmm. it makes them, I, at least it's been my experience because I used to hang out with people who would, I, I lived in the 50s in Kansas City, which is kind of a predominantly black area. And a lot of times we'd be out front drinking beer or whatever. Sure. People would come up and talk to us, ask for beer and hang out. And like people I know, like that I would talk, like my friends, they'd be like, what's up? You know, like trying to talk. Mm -hmm. like, Hi, I'm Andrew. Like, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> like, it's very nice to meet you. And I found that, like, people responded better to that, where they were like, oh, this dude's not... Authenticity is a whole thing. Yeah. Authenticity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Authenticity. I'm not trying to be anything different than what I am. Now, like, now, I'm I will here. say this. <clears throat> I will say this. Because I come from, the, particularly the, the Inland Empire, where I'm from, right, in California, is, like, heavily, it's very mixed, right very mixed but it's also very poor and so it's like 
it is very authentic. You, there are some very hood white guys where I'm from, like more hood than anyone I've known, you know, and they're just white as can be blonde hair, the whole nine. And I it's thought, authentic. It's authentic. I thought, it, I thought as a society, we were past this, that you can, it's a poverty thing. Yeah, not for a, sure. Not a race thing. It is for a sure. poverty thing. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a poverty thing for sure. Yeah. All right. Hey, by the way, guys, I was totally right about Ed Sheeran. Just saying, like, uh, somebody sent me. Um, thank you, by the way. So I'm going to plug something really quick. A lovely gentleman uh, sent me. I'm trying to find it right now. I'm so sorry. I'm, uh, so I'm not going to call him out or anything like that. But a dude sent me an email about this incredible uh, podcast I got kind of into. I have not listened to a lot of it, but uh, PSYOP mm-hmm. Cinema is really really good so basically this dude uh i think what happened is the video that somebody linked or the podcast that somebody linked me was a they put on their feed but they were like the two regular people from psyop cinema were on another show and they put that show up on their feed because it seems like it's a different host or something like that i'm not entirely sure if that's what's going on and it's about ed sheeran you're saying it's about ed sheeran and the (laughs) connection between him and Bring Me the Horizon, which is, uh, for those in the know, it's like a metalcore band from back in the day. And okay. then they kind of went like butt rocky a little bit. I never really liked them. Okay. And then all that goes back to, I don't know, Father, if you know Cradle of Filth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Cradle of Filth, n- notoriously, like hugely into, and I don't know anything about this. So Father, I, I, I put that uh, AO9, uh, the something about nine angles something like that it's like a cult thing having to do with like the nine angles very crowley blah 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 all that mm. stuff and like apparently he's totally wrapped up in it ed sheeran is and like really? he has a video um that i guess is just chop full of like really 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 ridiculous uh imagery and uh, there's like uh, a bunch of stuff happening he's got like his eyes covered at the very beginning and there's this whole, they like, they break it down. Like these dudes kind of opened me up and I'm maybe it's just me and everyone else is in the know about this, but they talk about like the, um, they come off a series about talking about the Joker. So they keep talking about the Jokers. It's like archetypal, like chaos mm-hmm. figure mm-hmm. and like the different ways that he's like changed as society has changed. And they Ooh. basically present it as this whole, like, um, Ed Sheeran, I best, I guess, like has a has a bunch of like butterfly imagery, which is like an allusion to Project Monarch. MK. What's that? To what? MK Ultra. MK Ultra. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. It's it's really it's like forty five minutes. You know, it's really really interesting. Thank you so much to whoever sent that to me. I wanted to specifically give you a shout out. I'm almost like done with the podcast, and I don't really listen to podcasts anymore. So like, that's, you know, that means I was genuinely interested. I'm going to go back and check these guys' feed out because it looks like they dive into the Batman, um, at least from what I've seen. And um, I love that movie, but it definitely, there was this definite overtone or undertone rather of Batman takes down the nasty conspiracy theorists, Mm. like, you know, the people who dared to question. And, you know, the shocking thing about that movie is the crazy wacko conspiracy theorists were right about everything. Mm-hmm. Every single thing that they brought up about Gotham, they're right about. But anyway, um, you know, I will say, Andrew, I'm always a little remiss to like for things that happen in music videos I'm, or even concerts or these types of things, especially when we're talking about like relatively big stars. I'm always a bit remiss to put it onto the star. Right. Because there are so many people because I mean, and just from my own experience, right, like, they just show up in the production. That's and right. Everything's already been written out for them. That's right. That's you right. Know, they're just, I mean, they're like puppets and stuff like that. It's That's kind right. of the whole Britney Spears thing. It's yes. like the narratives of her being I mean, she's just I mean, I, I'm not trying to she's just a victim. Just they're all mm-hmm. they're all basically fodder. They're all they're they're all basic sacrifices. They're sacrifices yep. that are being offered and, you know, it doesn't seem like that are taken on beyond. I mean, you know, so it doesn't seem like it's the case this time. This time, it seems hmm. like he's pretty willingly participating in it. Well, no, yeah. I think that's part of it, though, right? Is that it's all about a willing participation. So there, it, there is the 
Yeah, I'm not saying that they're like being forced yeah. against the will. Exactly. I'm saying that like, I'll give you an example. Like I would say Jay-Z is like an exception. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but you'll get a lot of people who certain imagery and things like that yeah they're like they'll go with it and maybe that's even part of their initiation i don't know but i don't think it's they're sitting there being like i want this video to communicate no. this because this is the clan i'm in and blah 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 mm-hmm. you know i don't i don't i don't think that's the case for a lot of them you know definitely anyone who's super high level mainstream you know they're just you know meat puppets kind of unfortunately to some degree but, i mean to to be fair it does end up that a lot of the same crew ends up working together over a long period of time. So like, you know, it may not be that particular artist per se, but if they keep working with the same director and the same producer and all of this stuff and they're friends and it's like, well, at a certain point, you're kind of, in, you're in on it. You know what I mean? Whether you consciously know or not, you're kind of in on it. So yeah, I would, again. And it's, maybe, but again, it's like, it's a weird without knowing the entire history of who's working well, on something it's hard to it would be hard to say i yeah. kind of think that that's what these dudes kind of break down is that that doesn't mm. seem to be the case here because mm. cradle of filth is pretty overt with their thoughts and beliefs about this kind of stuff and apparently ed sheeran was heavily influenced by cradle of filth i guess he grew up really listening to them mm. and here are these three bands that are now starting to kind of from what i understand work together a little bit like they like bring me the horizon which is like a mid-level metal core slash butt rock band and ed sheeran who i you know anybody who listened last week knows how i feel about ed sheeran and mm-hmm. then cradle of filth all like the only thing they really have in common is that they're from england that's the only mm-hmm. thing that all three of these bands have in common and uh it seems like they are all like you know i don't know if you guys want check it out i don't really know if i Maybe I'm not seeing the larger picture. Let's chalk it up to that. But I think that it seemed from what they were saying that he is actually kind of like into the stuff because I mean, he's so unassuming and that's part of the video as well as at the, the whole video is like him being a vampire and like, like part Mm. of it's like, he like, is like, like sees like a car crash and the car crash fly the victim flies out the front windshield and it's him and he deflates and i don't know there's like all this imagery that they kind of break Mm. down blah 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 blah. anyway check it out it's really interesting Uh, there's a there's a needless to say there's a lot of demonic imagery influence symbolism and occult behavior in the entertainment industry there's no question about that sometimes it's so overt too there's like this whole concert that Katy perry did where there's like now the theme is satan the theme is yeah. Satan, you know, sure. and like, it's just funny, you know, it's just silly. It's not a big deal. We're just doing Satan. But anyway, okay. So I think we had talked about doing an episode of, uh, of questions because I have not done any pre-pro for the Beatitudes. And I know that that's something I do want to do some pre-pro on. So this first one that I thought we would cover, I'm editing a lot of these guys down. That's not to disrespect, um, your emails, your emails are lovely. I love hearing your guys' stories. There's some, what is, what, what do we got there? All right. All right. Is this going to be one of those shows, Father? <laughs> this is going to be one of those episodes? That's fine. That's fine. Keep it late. Um, okay. So, uh, Christopher, Christopher, I loved your story. I'm going to get to the meat of the question. Um, so he asks, there is a possible error or oversight that his priest is making vis-a-vis a certain popular book series. I'm, I'm not going to name it that he is letting his children read, which have to do with overt wizard wizardry and witch stuff. So Harry his, Potter, let's just say it. That's what okay, it is. sure. Harry All Potter. Right. Uh, his priest is letting his children. By the read. way, I didn't, I didn't, I've not seen this question, but it was, I think it was so obvious <laughs> that we may as well just say it. <laughs> sure. I I'm still weary about stuff, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so Chris professes that he has a fair extensive knowledge of the way that occultism, masonry, and all that stuff kind of works. And he's seeing a lot of the themes in Harry Potter, a lot of the stuff about Harry Potter makes him incredibly uncomfortable that he is letting his children, his priests, his priest is letting his children read Harry Potter. And Chris is wondering the best way to go about approaching that with his priest. So 
And so, go. Here's what you do. Pray the Traparian to St. Cyprian of Antioch for 40 days. Fast for those 40 days according to your strength and with the blessing of your priest. And then if you still feel the need to speak with him, then very politely and respectfully ask to speak with him and just share with him your concern that you have some insight into these things and that you just want to share with him if he's not aware of it, the potential for this to perhaps adversely affect their child. Once you've done that respectfully, you've put the time to pray, and to fast and to be humble. If your priest accepts that, then thanks be to God. If he doesn't accept it, then you need to accept that. And then just continue praying and asking God for mercy. Anything else past that, you're asking for problems. Okay. Now is now is a good time to be doing that too, because uh, Saint Cyprian of Antioch's day is coming up. His commemoration is ten days from now, something like. Yep. Probably when they hear this, it'll be eight next. It'll be the next week. Yep. So, yeah. I'm I'm further reading questions, so I'm not just on my phone. I'm looking. I'm I'm trying to get you guys. You're wonderful, but you're not getting paid by the word, if I can say that. <laughs> um, so, but. Um, Father, real quick, um, I don't think I would allow my children to read Harry Potter right now. I'm kind of like a little bit raw about it. Do you have any, what makes that different than like, I, I they feel different to me, but what makes that different than Lord of the Rings? Do you know what I mean? So here's the, here's, a, there's a couple of things. Lord of the Rings is in a quote unquote fantasy setting. Um, oh. It's a lot easier for a child to kind of like distinguish and to make believe and all that stuff. But the other thing too is one of the one of the more explicit problems with Harry Potter is that it sets up a real life scenario in which the temptation to occultic practices or even just to be frank, demonic energy happens. So in other words, a child who's feeling bullied, you know, all, all of that stuff abandoned and, and that narrative whether it's true or not, is being kind of pumped to, to kids for the last couple of generations anyways. And that's the setup, right? Um, I need to find empowerment through the will, empowerment through some other force or energy outside of God. Now, I know there's plenty of Christians that want to be like, there's Christian themes and this and that. And I know J.K. Rowling, she had her run-ins with the woke mob and everything. But that's besides the point, referring back to what we've talked about in the past. It's not like Harry Potter was really her idea anyways. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, sure, the character and some of the interplay, that's fine. But those, some of those underlining themes, she's just pulling them out of the air. Yeah. Right? They're, they're not, they don't belong to her. And so, you know, there are, there are moments where, you know, he who doesn't gather scatters it's kind of like one of those things you know so it gets tricky because sometimes you can make too big of a deal and it becomes a forbidden fruit thing so i think it's just a really matter of time it's like i just make the point of talking to my kids about things there's a point where you say no but there's a point where you saying no will become counterproductive yeah and when that point comes you have to have the discernment and you need to say listen you're at this point, I'm going to let you read this or play that or do whatever, but you got to know this is what is a potential for you to being tempted by or whatever. And you need to start making these decisions because it's your job not to just, well, it's not his job because not his kids, but when it's your kids, it's your job to not just show them what's right or what's wrong, but also set them up so they can make those choices. Yeah. So they're not always looking to you always to see what is right and what is wrong can't. yeah yeah there's it's it seems there that the the issue would be the child reads the book correct me if i'm wrong here father in terms of what you're saying but it's basically like that the issue would be the child reads the book 
that leads to a lack of discernment in the future, which the child is not supposed to have great discernment anyway, and that they see occult practices as being something positive, okay, and something that they should, or it would be fine for them to turn to and actually do, right. rather or, than- Or, or innocuous. Ahead. Or innocuous, innocuous, right. Which yeah. sometimes yeah. might even be worse. I right. think that's the greater danger is, is like, oh, because that's where I found myself is like, oh, these crazy right wing, like ultra Southern, like conservative Christians are talking about the evils of like Harry Potter. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what, just to prove I'm not an idiot like them, I'm going to read it. You know, mm -hmm. that was not my, you know, that was like my view later on. I tell you my main problem, then we can move on. Mm. My main problem with Harry Potter, which is what I think I would be afraid of my children running into, is I read it at a relatively young age. I'm thinking like 10 to 12, something like that. And I was so, I was so pissed that there was a potential that this world, other world was real and I wasn't a part of it. I was oh, so, there you go. Because I was a muggle. I was like, there I'm a go. muggle. And like they are doing this cool stuff, like flying around on brooms, and all I'm doing is like driving to school every day. Like you know, that was like because you know that was an awakening from Christ. It's like, oh wait, no, this is the reality. This is the cool reality. This is the this is the good one. Like you don't want to go out into one of those other worlds. So this is where you want to be. Um, there's a, there's a weird thing there though, Andrew, because I also think that this might be like um. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like this might also be kind of like a generational thing because I feel like there, there have been books like that that present like somebody's going into a fantasy world, like kids going, kids from this world going into a fantasy world. Like, I, I mean, Chronicles I can name Narnia. them. Chronicles of Narnia would be an example. Uh, Wrinkle in Time would be another example. Like, it, I feel like there's all of these, the never ending story, which I loved as a kid, right? That, that, this would be another example, but I feel like the something may have happened in the last 20 years, maybe like the last generation or two, where the, the blurring of the lines, I feel like if you talk to somebody who's 50 years old and now, and they had read Harry Potter when they were a kid, I don't think that they would have been like, oh yeah, that's a real world that I could, not really, right? But I think that yeah. there's this weird because because we are blurring those lines so often with social media. Oh, I put a filter on my face. No, like, uh, forgive no? me. You know, I go think ahead, please. please. Forgive me. It, it's the it's the lines are being blurred because of the emotional the emotional state that these generations find that's, themselves. Mm, that's what I thought. Mm. Okay, go go on, go on, Father. Explain that a little bit. The core thing is there's a there's a real problem with emotional maturity, hmm. um, and so that's why there's a rise of all these different disorders. Right. And there's a lack of emotional maturity, and that a lack of emotional maturity, being able to face reality, uh, you know, all the things that are tough facing yourself, like like children, you know, children hmm. don't like to be corrected, children don't like to be told the truth, children don't like to be told what to do, all those things, right? Um, that causes the blur of reality. It's not the other way around because the yes. blur of reality is wanting to escape is, is an escapism. And that escapism is basically facilitating that kind of, it's that vicious cycle, right? So you can see how like our generation, like Gen X, whatever, we're going backwards in a sense because you know, our generation's kind of really characterized by this um, perpetual kind of like angst of adolescence. Yeah. You know, punk rock and the way yeah. that punk rock has, has become ubiquitous. Well, punk rock became ubiquitous because people in our generation are the ones who are running ad agencies, running exactly. all these things, you know what I mean? And punk rock basically was this kind of like stamping of our of a generation of saying like, you know, when the kid becomes 16, 17, 18, mm -hmm. 19, 20, 21, hey, I'm getting a bum deal, but you know, I'm going to make it work, you know, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, all these things, you know, the kind of real in your face, you know, middle finger attitude about things um, mm -hmm. and, and the tough guy thing that kind of comes with that, all that's into mm -hmm. play. 
but our kids or our kids' sisters and brothers, you know, so basically like, you know, Millennials, president. really. I mean, we're really talking about millennials. Here. Really talking Gen, about millennials. Gen, Gen Z yeah. to a certain degree. I mean, the the emotional gap between Gen X and millennials yeah. is, is huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's, it's huge. huge. And it's like, you know, I go ahead, you know, I'm sure people are gonna clicky clacky on that too, but just from my okay. experience, it's true. Oh, that's I'm sitting I, right here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I, guys, I wholeheartedly agree because escapism is that was like re mm -hmm. right away. It was escapism. I, I don't, I, my first thought was the emotional state of the world is worse. Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe that's just a sign of my immaturity that like, I don't, I'm never that guy really that goes like things are worse now than ever, but like, um, I would you say the that, secret is to that, you know, the secret is. Mm. the world isn't worse we are yeah right. well people yeah. have this thing where they think the world itself is like something's happening to the world and people this is getting manifested with you know the lie of overpopulation and global mm -hmm. warming and mm -hmm. blah 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 like it's all a lie yeah and it's all it's all an externalization it's all projection mm -hmm. right? because those who are like lack maturity emotionally they're you know it's it's just a common thing right mm -hmm. common thing this need to like change everyone else but myself yes <laughs> you know what i mean yes you know what i mean and and you know it's the gen x fault right because we were the ones who were like we won't i'm not gonna try to change everything but i'm also gonna be apathetic and cut myself yep. off in isolation because because isolation and that tendency to want to isolate be like i'll just do my own thing forget you whatever mm -hmm. that's that is like depending on which way you're going in the stream that's like the end point of that kind of juvenile infantile emotional mm -hmm. you know response or it's the kind of beginning point of, of maturity depending on how you want to look at it you know what i mean but that tendency to isolate that that's that was our kind of like plateau you know what i mean mm -hmm. generations before us they're like you know they got over it and blah 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 but everyone mm -hmm. behind us they're like it's not me it's you it's everyone else you know mm -hmm. and that's what the victim and like all the stuff right. comes from that. You don't, you see this particular to millennials and, and I think it might be turning around. I keep hearing these rumors of it turning around. I, I don't know. Cause I've not a, been experiencing that. I, I know that one thing that I'm uh, working with a young, with younger men that uh, they respond really well to the be a man. It's time to stop. Well, playing. Jordan Peterson, clearly they respond well to it. Yeah, this is what right. I mean by it's turning around. That's okay. So then yeah. that's what yeah. you're referencing. Yeah, then. this yeah. movement towards this. conservatism and really the right. I mean, this is, you know, the I mean, pendulum. Yeah, <laughs> you know the what pendulum I mean? swing. Yeah. You said it a long time ago in a podcast. I think the man beyond the wall or something like that. I think mm -hmm. you said that like Jordan Peterson, the part he know that he had men the most was talking about responsibility like what is oh, your responsibility yeah. like 100%. everybody's eyes were glued to him but i don't know i mean i think that also to a degree the you know why that is too i just want to say this you know does you know why that struck for everybody because it's true because they weren't hearing it from anyone yes because they weren't hearing it and yes because it's true oh i know where you're going <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going. I, don't, I have no idea where you're going. Go ahead, Father. Well, what it did was it, it really kind of gave them the empowerment that they were looking for. Oh. Okay. It's still about self. Yeah. Right? It, but it's it the, the guise of it looks a lot better. You know what I mean? But it's still about self. It's still about, like, me and what I can get, what I deserve. And, like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I can't. I can blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Not that there's anything wrong with it, I guess, but I'm just saying, like, calling it for what it is, because this is one of the things we got to uncover, because when people think that, like, yeah, it's positive, I guess. I mean, I'd rather have men taking responsibility and everything, and I'm not trying to be the critic and super negative of every single thing, but I'm just saying we got to be really honest about it, because the fruit, you know, we'll see the mm -hmm. fruit of, of how that's going to play out, and it's still self-centered. It's still egocentric. You know what I mean? And that's that's the thing that people are missing 
um, about how I'm not speaking per se for Mr. for Dr. Peterson, but I'm gonna tell you that's how a lot of people are how they're assimilating and internalizing mm-hmm. his message because I've met them. Hey, well, fa- I've Father, met them I fa- yeah. Go go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead, Father. What do you do? You know much about Phil Ensemble? from pantera i mean and down maybe and, more than the average you know <laughs> i mean but, that was something i rediscovered them about two years ago and i was immediately like oh this dude's not good like this dude's not good at all but like he is like i think a really good example of from all outward like uh from all outward appearances short of like his political and his religious he's a singer of pantera for those who don't mm-hmm. yeah he's a singer of pantera um down. down is really good um he's incredible his music uh he's going to be maybe one of those people that i'm not so sure i should listen to you anymore because, what's that i'm not a fan i i absolutely love him like there's just his vocal delight his style who he is as a person everything i just like I don't want to hang out with him. I don't want to be anything like him, but I can really appreciate that he's there and that there's just a Phil Ensemble out there. And, but the, he's a really good example of what happens of like a dude whose will is just, and he's a Crowleyan. He's totally into mm-hmm. Crowley, totally into will, totally into like, if you want it to happen, you have to make it happen. It's your mm-hmm. will or strength that has to make it happen. Um, but he, uh, he um he's this like a really good example of a dude that had his troubles but he's like really tough doesn't take any crap he's all about respect i mean the song walk uh i watched like uh, a reaction video to it and i don't know if you know it i don't i don't know if anyone like Hmm. it's just the song about respect and it's Hmm. just like it's just this one guitar like it's just a super like tough guy song it's Hmm. like a driving beat and like uh it's really simplistic except there's like amazing guitar solo in the middle um and the whole song is basically about respect and it's like be yourself by yourself stay away Mm. from me like basically he's addressing a person who's been talking like smack on him behind his back and like as i'm watching the video these like little tiny like you know no disrespect little tiny women by the end are like this they're like and like even everybody's doing this like because the chorus mm. is respect walk and then they go like that and like nobody showed them to do that like everybody just started doing it like i don't know it's like a spell almost it's like this whole idea of like oh, yeah. be tough be macho like give me my respect and i'll give you in like by all I, like by right. all like standards he's like a dude's dude like he is undeniably like a forgive my forgive the french a badass dude but Mm -hmm. it's a total like what happens when your will runs riot like what happens when you fall into this error of like it's up to you you gotta be tough you gotta Uh, you know i i would i would offer this pantera and fun is is to like heavy music and 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 a kind of street culture what Dexter Holland and uh, Offspring is is to mm-hmm. like punk rock, you know. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. when you take Phil and Samo and Pantera, you put them up against John Joseph and the Chromax. You know what I mean? You put them up against, you know, the the people from the Lower East Side and Stimmy, you know, Vinny Stigma and uh, Roger Murray and even the Cats from Bad Brains in in DC, like. You put them mm-hmm. up against. There's, there's a toughness that's authentic, and and it shows because because those guys are still. I don't want to say thoughtful, but it's like, you know, when we think about like for me, when I think about a man in that context, it's like you know the man, the kind of pugilist who's also like the gentleman who can actually talk mm-hmm. about something. Like being a man doesn't mean that you're like this brick you know meathead yeah and and i think that that's i think that's kind of like the the thing in regards of it is a spell because it did open up in the same way offspring opened up Mm -hmm. and and watered down these Mm -hmm. these kind of aspects of subculture because people don't know about you know again 
the Lower East Side stuff, you know, like New York hardcore and all that, which mm-hmm. is, and, and here's, here's why I would say this too, forgive me, you know, it's, I don't mean to be sassy, but, you know, the whole Cowboys from Hell, the glam thing that they were doing beforehand, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, to me, it's the same thing when I think about like, oh yeah, NWA easy and like, yep. and Dre, yep. and like yep. ah, you know. It's the form, it's the form, yeah, but the content we, is not there. And what was Dre doing before all that? We know. Right, he's in world world. What is it? Worldwide Wrecking Crew. You know what I mean? Wearing, wearing makeup and yeah, lip you know. gloss, everything. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so this kind of gets us back to the whole full circle, actually. Which I'm glad you brought it up. Andrew is like the Ed she sheer hand Sheenan and whatever mm-hmm. it is, and like how much, how much puppet masters are in play or not in play with it, and mm. you know, I just think because when you when you see these actual subcultures that exist. And then you see other people that kind of like take from it that that's not it's not authentic that's not their culture but they're able to take that thing and weaponize it that's what pantera does they weaponize it they I, take I'm they take that on. thing and they put it what's that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna this doesn't have to be a thing i'm gonna disagree with this <laughs> i'm just gonna say they they really like um you have to look at the broader picture of the metal scene at that time and there was a very, very strong call to sell out at that time. You had mm. to think what album just came out at the time of Pantera's peak height was the Black Album by Metallica. Mm-hmm. So there's this real, real temptation to slow things down, get things groovier and more accessible. Mm. And what did Pantera come out with? Far Beyond Driven and The Great Southern Trend Kill. Both of those albums are extreme. Well, not so much far beyond driven, but Great Southern Trend Kill is by far their least accessible album. That is the angriest, grungiest, most like unproduced. Where did it come from? What's that? Yeah, that's the question. Where drug did it come from? Hardcore drug addiction. Phil uh, is that where it came from? from? Did, yeah. did, did, did they originate that aesthetic? Um, Pantera married two worlds. They married, well, they married like three worlds. They married the world of, of down south, like groove metal, punk rock, and death metal. And like, they, they were doing the glam thing without a doubt. Like, I'm not going to deny that. But at the same time, from the moment that like, I think they got like Phil Ensemble actually like was like, no, I'm going to start doing this band the way I want to do it. Because Phil Ensemble only made one album with them when they were still doing the glam stuff. And then right after that, it was Cowboys from Hell. Right after that, and then beyond that, vulgar display of power. They never once stopped being Pantera. And there was huge pressure from the industry at the time to sell out and change and become more mainstream accessible. And instead, they went the further other direction. They went like, and then Down comes out. Mm-hmm. Down comes out. When was Nola? 1994? Uh, mm-hmm. No, it couldn't have been that early. It's later than that. Yeah, maybe 2004. Maybe it was 2004, something like that. I don't remember when Nola came out. Nola comes out and Down comes out. No, who knew? I mean, unless you were see, in Down the- and but see, Down and Pantera are not just literally two separate things. Pan- Down is able to happen because Phil at that point had already made his bones, can do what he wants, kind yeah. of. He's gonna do what he wants. Pan, you have to think about. I remember. When, when all that broke, when Walk broke, it was just like, man, he's got the shaved head. And this is not, I remember all that, right? Sure. And I remember watching people in, in, in school react to it. And I remember my crowd, my people having a different reaction to it too, because we were like, Poser. Yo, like we're listening to Agnostic Front sure. and Warzone and like, like all that stuff. So it's like, who's, you know what I mean? Like, who's, who are these guys? Like these are G's, you know what I mean? This is, you know, listen to like MOD and like all this stuff. So it was like, but them you know taking was? from that, them taking from the hardcore scene, which hardcore, when I mean hardcore, see, there's another thing. Hardcore is a technical, formal thing. It's hardcore is the blending of punk and metal, quote unquote, right? And it, and it comes down from DC, moves its way through the lower side of New York, and it kind of goes up from there, bossing all those places. But like, there was a certain aesthetic that you look and you're like, clearly Phil like went to a show, he's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I've never mm. seen it, I don't know, but from, from what I saw at the time, and you're like, okay, let's cut the hairs, do this, because you see that and it's like, yeah. And it was, it was infectious, that was his introduction to it. I could be wrong, someone you know like yourself could be this 
crazy Pantheran, you know, like, like historian. And it's like, it's all good. But I guess the point to the thing is like, is it really about Phil? Not really. Like what is, what is mm. moving all of that? Cause remember yeah. we, we started talking about like Harry Potter, you know what I mean? And then sure. like mm-hmm. getting to the will and all that. So that, that's kind of like my point is what you do is you take movements. It's, it's a wand. What's the purpose? I shouldn't even talk about this. I want to teach people about magic, but what is the purpose of these instruments? Well, they, they become focal points of which you manifest. Focus, yeah. Focus, you see what I'm saying? So you take a certain aesthetic that works like, oh, this is why you can choose whatever matches your temperament to be your quote unquote one, because that's what's mm-hmm. going to use and hone your focus. That's all he did. Sure. So to try to cut it more into that, that's kind of the same argument with like, Harry Potter, they're like, no, 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 it's J.K. Rowling, how all this, this is Christian illusions, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, but like, if you don't know the bigger picture, of course you're not gonna understand, you know, what we are, what I'm saying about this, because it feels like, no, it's this particular person and this and that. And I'm not trying to take away from people's quote unquote individual creativity, but I kind of am at the same time. Okay. Because, kind of you know what I mean? I'm As a lifelong artist and musician and like a scene person, it's like, you start seeing that like, oh yeah, this isn't really like you, you know what yeah. I mean? Like you've taken this and mm. maybe something's taken you and is using you and inspired likely, you and, yeah. and you are the gate by which it's coming out. You know what I mean? And so, uh, I mean, you know. Oh, I don't... No, I agree. And I think that that's actually, I think that makes the most sense because I think artists, and I have a, another question after this, but I think artists really like, who was it? Um, I think it was Bill Hicks. Someone said like, where do you get your ideas from? And he's like, mm-hmm. I wish I could tell you because if I knew I would have 24 hours of material mm-hmm. at my little hour and a half. And I think artists really wrestle. I know I have, cause I'm a writer, but like, I know that like there are times where I just am not feeling it and it and it and it it can almost like like it can almost like be like your muse or whatever is like turning its back on you it's like and this is one of the big distinctions because i was just telling someone (laughs) before i got on here it's like look we're orthodox christians we don't choose when we want to pray we don't go like i don't feel like praying you know what i mean and and if you're stuck like that guess what you're stuck like that that you are sitting in the devil's lap and doing sure. a dance, right? That, I just, tough. That, that's just what it is. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's why we have, that's why there's the prayer rule. And that's why there's also a huge, we talked about this before. It, it's one of the many ways that you can compare and contrast prayer with magic, prayer with spiritism, prayer with new age spirituality. Like they're totally different. And it's just like, you know, this whole thing of being subject to the wind and whatever I'm feeling like. And, and, it, and I mean, let's just talk about emotions and let's just talk about feelings. And like, the, that's the most pernicious thing that I see consistently undoing people. My feelings, my emotions, you know, I feel misunderstood. I feel like you don't know what I'm saying. I feel like I don't want to do this. I feel like God's not there. All that stuff, you know? I have a question, Paul. I, oh, oh, oh. so I, I find this actually really really interesting uh father what you're what you're saying and tell, tell me tell me if i have this right because this is something that i've experienced as well in my own creative pursuits in music in writing all of these things that there is this there is really this difference between some something like you're in whether it's, I mean, whether we're talking about subculture, whatever it is that we're talking about, whether whether we're talking about from within the church, there's there's a difference between, and this goes to kind of what we were talking about with soul the other day and music with soul, like, and then it gets back to Ed Sheeran, like this goes full circle, right, to Ed Sheeran. But it's like, there's a difference between being something coming out, something coming through you that is you that is being expressed by you and 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 brought into the world but it's something moving through you right it's a spirit moving through you rather than and i think this is what you're saying rather than somebody who is a a good technician let's say 
Like, I'm not going to use the term artist here. I'm going to say a great technician. You're a great writer. You're a great instrumentalist. Any of these things, right? You're a great guitar player. You could just say, oh, I want to make a, fl oh, flamenco. Wow, that sounds awesome. I'm going to make a flamenco album. I'm going to be a flamenco artist. And you just sit down and you can do flamenco, mm -hmm. right? Because you can play. And then you listen to a few things. Okay, I could do that. And maybe you could string a few things together in some patterns. And then you're like, oh, no, I'm going to do metal. Mm -hmm. And then you're over here and you're like, no, I'm going to do Zydeco. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you can do any of those things. And then in order, you know, and then you're like, oh, I really like flamenco now. So now you start dressing like a flamenco guy. Mm -hmm. Now you start, your aesthetic becomes like flamenco. Then you're like, oh, I'm going to do metal. Now you're metal. But it's, mm -hmm. but you're saying. But it's, it's not you. It's, it's like uninspired. No, I'm saying that perhaps it could be inspired, but it's inspired in a, in an inverted way. Yeah. So that, yeah, go ahead, father. Okay. So there's a couple of days, a couple of ways we can kind of like test out this, what you're saying. Right. Um, I'll go with like kind of what I know. And then some of it may sound outdated. I, I mean, I don't even know anymore who, who, what people know. So like you compare um, Pete Townsend, from the who and keith richards from the rolling stones okay pete townsend will say to you i'm a maestro i'm i'm you know i'm conducting i'm putting together whatever you know what i mean keith richards is just like yeah it, it's something's coming through me right well you can tell the difference you can you can tell the difference you know what i mean like something's going on with keith richards and we all, it's like a joke, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, okay, we all know something's going yeah, on. Yeah, we all know something's going on. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and he acknowledges it. Mm -hmm. Pete Townsend, it's like, yeah, Pete Townsend's great, blah, blah, blah. Especially if you're like mod culture, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, you mm -hmm. go like, yeah, I mean, it's a guy and, his, and it's his thing. And he, he has some talent, was able to, and maybe he does pick up on some stuff, whatever, but there's, there's a difference, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's the maestro and then there's the muse. Now, even in that movement, though, you can get someone who is adept because aesthetics are a type of aesthetics can and are used in an occultic sense. Absolutely. 100%. Right? Because it matters, right? Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, and why does it matter? I'll tell you why it matters because everything is in opposition and trying to move away or in a, or be opposed to or be in the place of the, tr the the true archetype which is Christ and the church. Mm -hmm. So instead of like chasing around all of the mirages, the imitations and the smoke screen, let's get back to the original and start understanding like the way that the beauty of the church, the way that the aesthetic of the church and the way that the aesthetic of the church as a meta influences and is able to manifest and reflect itself differently depending on the prism. What I mean is like culture, cultures are the prism, right? Mm -hmm. So even in the sense we have this conversation last night in um, catechism, but like even here in little Kansas city, which nobody cares about and you know, nobody even knows about Amen. the, the beauty of the church is, is, is incarnate and it reflects in a certain way that's very particular to the people here who are embodying that. Mm -hmm. right? Because the way, it, when it works properly is that the, the windows, the recipients, they receive the light, right? They receive the light and that light is able to inform and, 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 and really bring out the beauty of that thing, meaning the, meaning the glass, meaning the window, the stained glass window. But the inverse of that is a distortion, right? That's why Keith Richards is a caricature. That's why Jay-Z is a vampire who lives off of making right. a caricature of his people. Right. Right. That's why we can go on and on about like Phil Anselmo and like all these people, they're caricatures or they, they develop and manifest caricatures, mm -hmm. right? They, there's an authenticity, there's an authenticity that's lacking because they are not connected to the source. They are opposed to the source. This, the father, yes. This, so this gets me back to, so now this is what triggered off for me when you brought up Jordan Peterson. And so now with that context, because I think that's the context, and I think that this is the Jordan Peterson thing, because as I, ha as I have, and again, 
okay, if, if maybe I, maybe I'm a critic, maybe I've gone too far, you know, but I'm somebody who, I mean, you know, people can go back and watch my interview with Jordan Peterson from my own show in 2017, right? Like I was one, I think I had him on yeah, that's the, way week, before. Be, the week before Rogan did, yeah. I had him on, right? Yeah. So like for me, the reason I did my podcast was to interview Jordan Peterson. And I tell him that in the interview, mm-hmm. like that was the whole reason that I did it was because I was tracking this guy, mm-hmm. right? It, like nobody knew about him. And I was like, this person is important. And one of the things that has come up as people have answered, including some relatively well-known individuals who I'm not going to name, relatively well-known individuals who we we are all aware of, we all people listening will all know these individuals who Harry are supporters, Potter. supported <laughs> Harry Potter, who are supporters of uh, Jordan Peterson. And one of the things that people say, and, and there will even be people who are listening right now who this would be their response to me is, I am now Orthodox, but I wouldn't have found Orthodoxy if I hadn't have found Jordan Peterson, right? And, and another, this individual person I'm thinking of says, you know, they said to me, well, the reason I'm publicly supporting Jordan Peterson is because Orthodox parishes are doubling and almost all of those people who become Orthodox have Jordan Peterson on their timeline in their journey, although they come to hate him when they become Orthobros, right? That was the exact quote. Mm -hmm. And what I've, and so what's interesting, if people go back and watch that interview that I had with Jordan Peterson, I actually, in a way, bring up the journey with him. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting in this regard, because I say to him, I say, listen, uh, Dr. Peterson, I've been telling people that I have three gurus, right? This is me in 2017. I said, it's uh, Joseph Campbell, Alan Watts, and you, Mm -hmm. right? And so Jordan Peterson is on also my journey to orthodoxy too. But what I found interesting about it is, so is Alan Watts. Mm -hmm. And you know who else? Has Alan Watts deeply on his journey? Blessed Fox Seraphim Fox. Rose. Yeah. Blessed, blessed Seraphim Fox. Rose. Yeah. And so then it raises to me, should I be supporting Alan Watts, who drank himself to death, had so many demons, and was pushing uh, Zen Buddhism, right? And Joseph can't, like, am I pushing them? What I see is this. Uh Father Sarah from Rose and me, had we stopped at Alan Watts, we never would have found orthodoxy. And there's a lot of people right now stopping at Jordan Peterson and therefore not finding Christ. So in other words, I found orthodoxy in spite of Jordan Peterson standing in the road on the way trying to get me to take a detour. Which is, I I mean, God bless you. I'm glad you bring it out that way because I just want to say this, maybe... Like Andrew said, it's just one of those nights. But <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't want to be super snarky, but it's like, you know who was on my road? Mm. Uh, John D. Yeah. <laughs> Alistair Mine Crockett. too. Mine too. Uh, Gene Simmons. <laughs> uh, uh, um, um, Anton Wilson. Uh, you know, Cosmic Trigger. Um, I mean, and, you know, the devil yeah (laughs) yeah the the devil was on my path and uh you know so i mean i'm not gonna sit here and be like yeah you know you know you know the reason why i gotta give the devil's props because he's pushing people to christ you know what i mean (laughs) it's just like well which would be to bring up saint cyprian of antioch which is of course my you know my patron yeah, the, de- the devil was. You you read the story of Saint Cyprian of the the Vita of Saint Cyprian of Antioch. The devil was on his journey too. That's right. That's right. I mean, I just I just think it's important <laughs> because you know, um, again, you know, may God, may God have mercy on Dr. Peterson and open things up. Seriously, you know, may he actually repent and come to Christ. But the the key thing is, may he actually repent, right? And yep. so we just have to. I I think the problem is is that like. And it, again, you know, it's hard because we get into people's, who, who, who are we to say, you know, people's personal motivations, whatever. But I think the thing that we're concerned about is, so this project, right? We like to talk about these things. You know, people may get annoyed with us because we talk about things. And it's like, come on, get to the Christ thing, get to like the deep, whatever stuff. But it's like, the reason why we talk this way is because this is real life. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, 
very few people, well, I want to be careful here. Very few people are sitting there and just like, <laughs> there's people who think they're praying all the time and they think they're just consuming ortho content all the time, but they're really, you know, kind of just deluding themselves. But like the reality is, is that people live their lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the question is, can you live your life and find Christ? That's what I'm concerned about. That's why we're doing this. That's why we do this project. It's like, so the person who's living his life and he's living with his mom and his dad and they're watching CNN all the time and he's drinking that in or the person who's married and his wife is watching, you know, Fox News, whatever the thing is, or, or they're listening to whatever the thing is, we are hopefully being able to approach that and be like, can you find a way out? Is, is, or do you have to just kind of be, you know, intoxicated and, and wasted by the glut of media? That's why we talk about so much pop culture and so much of the other stuff, because it's like, yeah, this is, this is the stuff that people talk about good for better or for worse. So, so what's the deal, right? And so hopefully what happens is, is people see that if you chew on this stuff and, and you're open to Christ and really wanting truth, these, we, I believe, we believe that the truth will be revealed. Truth is a person, right? That's why this whole line, timeline of like, you know, Alan Watts and everything, leading the Father, Sir from Rose, you know, Alan Watts, you know, Jordan Peterson and the other person, Joseph Campbell, you mentioned. All this is important because what we're trying to show is like, everyone has their timeline. No. No one who can hear us is hatching out some holy orthodox theologian who's going to be able to talk about everything, you know, because th th that's nobody, right? Everyone is, it, we as Westerners are born in filth, socially, intellectually, spiritually. And this was, <laughs> forgive me, this is my homie this morning. You know how good God is? That's how good God is. Today is the, or was, because it's, you know, now the next day. But it was the feast day of the um, Ivron icon, the Hawaiian Ivron icon, mother daughter. And so I was telling people this morning, I was like, you know what? Uh, I was speaking about how the, the speech by Putin was garnering all his attention. You know, I was, and I was like, well, What's been fascinating me is that whether it's people on the left or the right, everyone is commenting on this like this one thing. They're like, well, Putin's not wrong. He's not wrong. Everyone's saying that. Everyone's like, he's not wrong, right? The left or the right, they're, they're all like, yeah, he's onto something. And then they'll go into like how he's using it to manipulate this or using it to manipulate. It doesn't matter. The point is left and right and center, they're like, Putin's not wrong. His scathing critique of the West is correct, okay? So I led with that and I'm like, here's the thing, right? In spite of these things, the mother of God loves us so much that she chose to have a miracle working icon revealed in the States. People don't understand how big of a deal that is. And I was talking with one of the sisters today. She's like, like in, in the rank of consistently flowing um, miracle working icons, where is it in, in the ranking? I said, you know, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert in that, but it's like, I couldn't think of any icons that I, off the top of my head that are known for flowing as, cause she's, she's been flowing ever since 2007 till now consistently. And I mean, flowing, not trickles, flowing, right? I, I think people, if you don't know this, now you know. But if you don't know, like, right? So like, yeah. now you know, and you know how big of a deal that is, that the mother of God in her mercy for a sinful, wretched, satanic, born in filth, or satanic inspired Western Americans, there's hope. Yeah. She says, let me reveal myself so that people can see my son. That's what that icon means, right? And yes, it's a warning. Yes, it's a call to repentance, but it's still love. 
Yeah. And it's and it's it's miraculous. And we are everything Putin said is correct. <clears throat> and that's why all the more reason we should give thanks to the mother of God and to our heavenly father that he's not abandoned those who want truth, getting back full circle, right? If you want truth, here's the thing. There is no multiplicity of gods and all this and that. I mean, yes, yeah, the divine council, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying. There's our, our faith is the true faith. Our God is the true God. The mother of God, she is the mother of God and she exists and she's real. And that icon that we celebrated today is, there's your proof, skeptics. There is no little elves underneath there with the oil can squeezing this myrrh. That myrrh is literally from heaven. Mm -hmm. So since we know that, everything else that we can talk about from there, yes, let's talk about being wise and discerning with Harry Potter. Why? Because it matters. Let's talk about what's going on with Ukraine and Zelensky and who is he really, because it matters. Let's talk about Phil Anselmo and all these things. And like, where is the inspiration for that or for Keith Richards? Because it matters. Yeah. Because although we can have fun and blah, 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 at some point in time, we have to wake up and sober ourselves up and say like, okay, yeah, what is the real deal here? Because I think, the mother of God is beckoning us to that, to wake up. I, I think that is what comes down to is like, how physical are you willing to make your faith? Like, are you willing to believe that like, that like there are genuinely like people as supposedly as super superfluous as like pop artists that are being used as instruments to help brainwash and manipulate you. Like, are you willing to believe that that is a tactic definitely used by the enemy? And if you are willing to believe, then that makes the faith all the more physical of like, no, these are not, I have to make sure my ideology is correct. And I have to make sure it's incarnational. It's incarnational. Yeah. So, Father, I'm busting. I'm sorry, I'm busting. I have a question that we've been sure. wanting to ask you. I've been like a little, like, yeah. Anyway, so you talked about a little while ago about emotions and how much like emotions can make people like distort people and may maybe lead them down the wrong path a little bit. What is the difference between intuition and emotion? Like, because I know that there are times where in my early in my faith, where I would be like, I'm getting a weird vibe from this person. And I'd be like, oh, no, that's an emotion. Like, cut it off. Like, you know, like, like, and it turns out later, I should have left that person. I should have like not hung around that person. And, or I was in a situation like, and um, to put it frank, the first time I encountered truly like demonic a demonic presence and i did encounter it i tried to brush it off for the better part of like an hour and a half it's just a weird emotion i was feeling and i was trying to cut it off and like trying to be like okay no 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 no. let's not pay attention to this it'll go away but it became evident this was something entirely different now that is that but at the same time i've had times where it's like you shouldn't call this person right now you're not in the space to to really talk to this person how is that different from i don't feel like calling them right now you know what i mean father i know i know how i can feel the difference between the two one feels a little bit more sure and one feels a little bit more like kind of like with the wind but like about the why there's there's i mean we can pull us apart to the super micro if you want but the short the long and short of it, it's the distinction is the why, right? So first of all, intuition, like intuition and emotion aren't the same thing. They're, the correlation between the two of them are what we would say are feelings, right? But like feelings and emotions, I would submit to you aren't the same thing. Okay, this is the first time I'm hearing that, so. So I would submit to you feelings have to do with a response to a perception, an observation, right? Whether it's an external thing that you're, or some sort of phenomena that you're observing or experiencing, right? And that external phenomena then will trigger a, a, 
a series of events, including your physiological responses, dopamine, cortisol, all that. And that in turn will influence a, a feeling or phenomena. The emotion is that is thus the articulation expression of that feeling. So, so are we, so by feeling is would like sensation be maybe a term that way, could be yeah, used? Yeah, another way of saying so. Uh, so a sense, the difference between a sensation, I'm feeling something, mm -hmm. and an emotion, like, oh, I don't like that I'm feeling that, so therefore well, I'm, I'm afraid. Yeah, or I'm, yeah, I'm feeling something. I'm feeling something, and then I will try to understand it, discern it, and then express it. And that's the emotion. Oh. And this is why when I say you can't trust your emotions, right? I could also say like, you can't trust your feelings, but I say emotion, because here's why. Emotion is where people really get caught in the trap because the emotion is where their pride comes in. And that's where they're like, this is because you've made a discerning judgment. You said, this is the feeling. I think this is what the feeling is telling me. And God forbid I'm wrong on such a personal level. Therefore, okay. whatever I'm feeling emotion wise is correct. That's where people get caught. So Are you me, what I'm saying? Because me, I'm sorry. Let me reiterate, reiterate just so I make sure I'm with you because I'm the voice of the people to an extent. So if I'm confused, I want to make sure I understand. It's almost like it's a uh, the feeling is the stimuli. It's the being poked. Then the emotion is the response to that stimuli. And the problem is, is that your response mechanism is often corrupted. Mm -hmm. So it's like your pride. So data is given to you mm -hmm. and then you analyze that data. But because the wet, the means of analyzing that data is corrupt, you often come times come, you oftentimes come up with a, with a bad response. Mm -hmm. So father, you tell me, Andrew, you're lazy. Mm -hmm. And my, and my feeling is this dude's attacking me. Mm -hmm. This dude's insulting mm -hmm. me. I express mm -hmm. that emotions with, well, father, you can't talk to me like that. Like mm -hmm. that's not, that's not our role. And because of my pride is wounded essentially. So, and, and so me trusting me saying, whoa, father, you back up me trusting that is what you're warning against. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two, right. two people could have, I mean, I think an easy way of thinking about it is two people could, will have different emotional responses to the same stimuli. So like I can show the same picture to two different people and depending on their background, where they're at, what they're feeling at that given day, this person could be totally happy about it sure. and feel a sense of love. And this person could be afraid, angry, you know, so, wrathful, father, any of those I things. Mean, someone could make the argument, the more you take offense to something about a situation, the more corrupted your noose would be. That's not an argument. That's the fact. Hey, uh, like if you're orthodox, that's the thing. So like, here's, here's the thing. I'll, I actually want to dismantle what Cyprian said a little bit and, and make it more to the point by going extreme. Take out two people, make it the same person. You'll get one person. Yeah. Right? I see it every day. Yeah. I see one person. Here's how, here's, here's how my reality works. Right. Um, I have I have responsibility as a priest. I have responsibility as a dad. I have responsibility, you know, as, as a Christian. Are you following me? But in particular, my vocation, like I have responsibility, you know? Um, and, and I'm just, whatever. I am laying myself bare for the, hopefully God willing for the benefit of everyone. So forgive me for using myself as an example, right? I see this all the time where I'll talk to someone and if and I, I see it, I'll talk to them in the middle of the day. I'll say, hey, this and this and this and that. You're doing this and this and that. The situation is you're not seeing this, this and that. Oh man, thank you, Father. And then they see, they accept it in humility and there's blessing. They're, they're growing in wisdom. A situation is blessed, right? End of the night, whatever temptation, maybe they had too much, you know, hot cocoa. I don't know what it is. No. It's not this and that, and you blah, 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 right? And then there's this, there's arguing. What's changed? i will tell you what's changed. I didn't change. You know why I didn't change? Because I fear God, right? I don't care what anyone says. I fear God. I didn't change. Because even when I want to just burn someone to the ground, I don't. You know why? Not because I'm a good guy. 
I fear God. That's how it works, right? The person on the other end, they're the ones trying to avoid the ego death. That, that's, and that's why they end up doubling down because they're like, my emotions, blah, blah, blah. And then the thing is, all the stuff kicks in, right? But the big problem is that hook of my judgment of what this feeling is, which is uncomfortable, right? The second you make that judgment that like, I'm uncomfortable because of something someone else did versus myself, it's a wrap, it's done. Father, I've seen this in my own, <laughs> since becoming Orthodox, I've seen this in the most interesting ways of remembering past things that I've done, mm -hmm. that before I was Orthodox, it was still in the past, mm -hmm. still the same memory, mm -hmm. but remembering it and having a feeling of, you know, an emotional response of like, oh, how good of me, of, of proud and joy and pleasure. And then now looking back and being like, ooh, a feeling of, oh, why did I, oh, that was a mistake. And in the, on the positive, like that's a little bit like, I don't want to get into the two, I'm guilting myself. I'm, I mean, that's what repentance is for, right? So I'm not, I don't want to get into that, uh, that it's like I'm walking around guilty about my past actions, right? I'm repenting for my past actions. But on the helpful side, I mean, there was a, there was something that you and I spoke about you know, where you gave me, and after, you know, talking to my godfather as well, yeah. and you gave me some instructions on some things that I should do, and my emotional response, my initial emotional response was like, resisted? <laughs> very internally quite upset, right? Yeah. But then yeah. having faith and being like, because, and it's good, because even here in a conversation, we had had a conversation about like, your spiritual father says to do something, even if in the moment you're feeling that way, just do it. And you know what? I, it, the interest, most interesting and like edifying part about it was I did it. And then within 24 hours was like, oh, that was the right thing for me to do. Yep. Like to my core, I was like, oh, I'm so thankful father did that. Like this is, that was so much better. Yep. And that previous feeling was gone. Yep. Gone, gone. Because like gone. It, and I'm I'm gonna say this, right? I love you, Cyprian. You 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 truly are an intelligent, brilliant man, whatever. You're still a scumbag sinner. Indeed. I'm reminded you, of that every day. You hear what I'm saying? You're still uh, yes. you're still a scumbag sinner. You you still have pride, you still have all these things that we all do. But you are acquiring that muscle memory, spiritually speaking that skill set of being like, I know I don't want to do this, everything in me, like whatever. But I, here's the thing. You are baptized. I baptized you in the ocean. You're baptized. The grace of God, not metaphorically, not symbolic, literally has infused and imbued you. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And, and, and this is the big tragedy. If you're not baptized and you're doing whatever, God bless you. You know, you can only do so much. And if you are like not baptized and, you, and you're listening to this, and you're struggling, you should just know God is with you. Even the fact that you can even hang listening to what we're talking about. Right now, if you are baptized and you are communing, you know, stuff and you're still like fighting and this and that, woe unto you. You know why? because God is not a liar. And this is the thing I try to impress upon people. It literally is you, literally. Now, if you got some demons hooked in you, that's a different story. Let's talk about that, you know what I mean? But this is the big trick. The demons don't even need to... When you're baptized, they, they begin to attack you from outside, not from within. And they get us to acquiesce. And how do they get us to acquiesce? Ego, self-preservation, everything that Christ is trying to lead us into. That's why it's the cross, people, because that's, it is, <laughs> it's just, right? So here's the thing. It's the cross. It's repentance. Okay, we never have to do another show again, right? Like every, everything's going everything's gonna to come down to that, you know? But I mean, that's like, that's the crazy thing. And listen, every day, 
it, every day you die. And then there's a resurrection, you know? And it's gonna, that cycle will repeat itself until finally is your final death, you know what I mean? And with God's mercy, with that final taking of your, that your last breath, you will hopefully awaken to eternal life. But some of us won't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Some of us are gonna wake to eternal, uh, you know, eternal death, unfortunately. And, and why are we gonna wake to eternal death? I'm gonna tell you real simple. This is so scary because at the end of the day, you can want to point to me, you can want to point to your mommy, you can want to point to your bad husband or your bad wife or your brother or so-and-so or the white man or the black man or the, who cares? At the end of the day, it's your fault. It's your fault. Because at some point in time, I was just talking about this with one of my brothers, right? One of my brothers was having a situation, brother priest was having a situation, you know what I mean? And dealing with some people that are dealing with some legit demonic oppression, like legit demonic oppression, you know? And I, I had to tell him, I said, look, you know, at the end of the day, they have to choose, you know, God gives everyone the space, even under, because God allows demonic oppression for our salvation. God allows it to come to, to push people to this place where they can see themselves honestly, right? He doesn't put it upon them. He allows it. He says, okay, I'll allow it to go to a certain point because I'm hoping someone will come to their senses, right? But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, the priest coming to you, trying to love on you, your godmother, your godfather, your friend, your neighbor, your sister, your brother. These people are all God's hand trying to say, please, I am begging you, stop this madness. You're consuming yourself. And some of us will not listen. And then when we close our eyes for the last time, we begin a life eternal of this gnashing of teeth, you know? So anyways, uh, I, I think it's real important to keep this in mind because everything that we're talking about at some point in time comes down to choices. I mean, all of us here at some point, God has called us to say, should you really be watching that right now? And I know this sounds so fundamentalist and so pedantic and like, you know, that's a trap that a lot of Orthodox, maybe not now because 2020 things are serious and people know it. But when we came into the church, you know, there was this phase that people were like, well, I'm Orthodox now, so I could do X, Y, and Z, right? Cause I'm not like, whatever, a fundamentalist evangelical. But like the fact of the matter is you, you go long enough and then you hit this crossroad, you're like, am I gonna take this serious or not? And then when you start taking it seriously, then you start realizing like, man, it kind of does matter what I'm gonna listen to today. Yeah. Because absolutely. if I listen to this right now, I know it's gonna make me depressed. I know it's man, gonna- Man, that's the story of Russia from the nineties to now. Yeah. You know, my wife talks about that too. And it's just like, She's become, as things have become harder for her people, she's become steadily like grown in her faith and become more orthodox because it's like, you know, when we first met, it was kind of like, well, I'm, I'm, I am orthodox. I'm Russian. So it's like, there's a lot, there's leeway right. we do, but we do this thing. And now it's like, and I think that that's like writ large now. And now it's like, no, no, that straying away was maybe not a good idea. Like, yeah. let's get back. I mean, you know that that's and that's really difficult to admit in and of itself is that like i was like oh, dang it they were kind of right about some stuff but and i won't go on about this but like i've actually really recently been given an insight and it was part of the whole um the podcast i was talking about at the beginning is the traps is the is the fact that i had that aversion to just like a sense of discernment of like maybe you shouldn't be checking out like these horrifically satanic black metal bands <laughs> and it does make you feel weird don't try and deny it that it's making you feel weird and oh i just need to see things differently and the conflict that arose in me from that like the fact that i was repulsed by the idea that like like i was talking about last week i was talking about with the elvis i was like well some of the people were right some of the people were like he was being extremely sexually suggestive and it did kind of set this precedent 
for like, this is okay to do, you know, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the thing I wanted to make sure I threw in is me personally, if I am struggling with getting to prayer, I say a uh, prayer to St. Joseph, the Hezekast. I'm just like, St. Joseph, please help me. Because I think he's like, if you don't feel like praying, do it. He's the man to get you to help. Yeah. So a lot of times that really helps. And a lot of times, like with all things, and I'm just talking real basic. I'm just a layman here, but I'm just saying on a practical everyday level, like all things, if, if you don't want to do it and you do it, most of the time you feel better afterwards. Like most of the time, the bitterest of medicine, you, the spoon is coming up to your mouth. You're smelling the gross, like oh, I don't want to taste this. Oh, and then it goes in your mouth. And actually it's not so bad. You know, it's kind of bad for a second. Then it it starts to get better. And then by the end, whoa, like you're laughing and you haven't laughed all day. You know, like it's been like a really hard day. Then you pray, start laughing. You start joking around in my situation, start joking with your wife. You know, it's the end of the day, blah, 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 blah. Things generally get easier. And I, I know morning prayers are more difficult for me than evening prayers. By the time I get to evening prayers, I'm generally ready to pray. I'm like, okay, let's, you know, you know, God preserve me, but like, let's, let's do it. I'm feeling this. I really want to do it. But like morning prayers, a lot of times I should just get an icon of them. But I, I say a little prayer to St. Joseph that has a cast most mornings because I'm like, dude, please help me. Like, I'm not going to be able to do this. Like, I'm not going to be able to get attentive. I can do the form. Sure. I can sit there and read the, 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 but if I, I want to just at least have a little bit of grace today and not fly through the prayers and immediately get to breakfast, like, you know, actually take some time, then generally a prayer to him helps, you know, and then the, my baptizing priest one time, he was talking about the Eucharist is like at the end of the liturgy, father, you're talking about like a uh, cross and resurrection because it's the resurrection and there's nothing else then what else can he do? He's done everything. Like that's the end of the liturgy. Like this is it. This is the, this is it. This is, this is the liturgy. There's nothing else. We say like five more minutes of prayer and then we're done. He's like, that's it. We're done that we did it. That's exactly what it's there for. There is nothing else. There is nothing else beyond this. This is the pinnacle of everything. And it's, and it's given to you. We're done. We're done. That's, that's the peak of it. And then the liturgy is done. And I was always like, ah, in that simple way, he just made it so like profound of just being like, yeah, that's, that's true. That's absolutely true. We do some uh, really awesome hymns or some really, you know, and then we're done. We, we wrap up. So um, that's all I got. But uh, we've got about 25 minutes left. How about another question? Yeah, how about another question? The, only one, the other one only took an hour and a half. So um, again, this is from Christian um it is a long and it is a long email i i think and christian please let me know if i messed up i think um he or she i'm not sure is struggling with i could go find go through and find it recently baptized um is struggling with the idea of patriotism in america from what i understand wanting to be proud of our country but still seeing the godlessness, seeing the depravity. Um, to, sum, to sum up, I'm struggling with what it means to be ethnically an ethnically American Orthodox and a non-Orthodox nation. I think it's a different question than what I meant it to be. To sum up, I'm struggling with what it means to be an ethnically American Orthodox and a non-Orthodox nation in an ethically Serbian Orthodox church. Basically, like, how far should you, I guess, how, how far should you have your ethnic like your american ethnicity play in to your faith you see what i'm saying because there's ways of like of 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 baptizing certain parts of other cultures you know like the serbian and the slava you know yada yada example x y and z but with america it's kind of difficult you know what i mean that was the question the person's an american the person is an american american the person is an american and they are struggling with being Being an american being american in an orthodox country I mean, in a non-orthodox country you know what i mean yeah so i would just say to you one of the great things about being american orthodox or you know not coming not coming from a traditionally quote-unquote orthodox 
um, ethnicity and background, Greek, Serbian, Russian, Bulgarian, blah, 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 Syrian, whatever. Um, you're able to rightly and without offense, you know, eat at the buffet. Hmm. So enjoy, you know, like if, if you go to the buffet, if you just want to eat the Chinese noodles, you know, great. If you just want to like, cause people do that. You have people who like, they, they're Americans and they're in the Antiochian church and they get all into Arabic culture, all into it. Arabic food, blah, 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 la, 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 Habibi, great. You know what I mean? If you just want to eat the falafel and that's what all you want to do, there's people who are like that. Great. There's some people who they don't like to mix the foods, you know? They're like, yeah, I could have some pot roast. I could have some Chinese noodles. I can have some falafel and uh, that's great. Some people, they don't like to do that. So as an American, you can appreciate, you can go to a Serbian church and still, you know, kind of appreciate the way that the Antiochians do something or the way that the Greeks do something and the way that, you know, the Rokor does something. And you, without having to feel the need to like, I have to pretend I'm a Russian now. Cause that's a trap that a lot of people kind of fall into. And, Amen. you know, and if depending on what, you know, kind of ethnicity you're coming from, you know, you could be really tempted by it because maybe you look like you could fit in somewhere, but I don't got that problem. So I'm not tempted by that. So for me, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just at the smorgasbord and I can appreciate it. And here's a different shade. Here's a different little thing I can throw there. I, I missed this. I'm sorry. They are feeling a hint of jealousy at the Serbs, Greeks, and Russians that they are seeing having pride in their country. And they, they were wondering, like, how can I do that as an American while American is so obviously an anti-God country? Or in, 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 uh, satanic, to quote uh, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. Like, so, so here's the thing. I've built my whole life around this insight um you just you know saint pavle the pig you know he's i call him saint because he's a saint you know patriarch public uh two page uh two patriarchs ago um in the serbian church serbian church okay. he says Essentially, you don't get to choose your family, your race, your country, the time you live in. All you can do is decide how you're going to live your life. Are you going to live your life as a Christian in that context, right? This kind of gets back to what we talked about, I think, maybe last episode in regards of African-Americans. Maybe that was like the episode before that. I don't know. Everything's a blur. But sure. like... Because I know you well, I, I know exactly how you're feeling. I just, I just want to tell you, leave off the jealousy in the sense of like wanting something that someone else has, and just lean into the authenticity. Here's what's wrong with everybody: they're not honest. Here, here's what's wrong with everybody: they're not honest and they're not humble. Right? If you're honest and you're humble, that will solve everything. So if you're like, this is who my country is, this is my nation is, but I still am grateful for my context it's like this you know it's like love uh <laughs> you know i love everybody right but believe me if you want me to I'll, I'll dress you down i'll tell you what's wrong with you i love you i'll tell you what's wrong with you though you know what i mean I, i'm not under any illusions with anybody sorry i, I, I hope you know it might scare some people but you know there there isn't one person on this earth where i'm just like you're flawless and whatever, you know, it's call it the curse. I can just pull you apart and not even like, not even a mean way, just honestly, this is what's wrong with you. Like holding you up to like the life of the church, God, all that stuff, you know what I mean? This is what's wrong with you. Does that mean I don't love you? Actually quite the opposite. Yeah. It's, it, it, it actually helps me to have an authentic love for you, not based upon something false and self-serving. Mm. You know what I mean? So as an American, you know, and like, hey, I'm the guy who everyone says, like, you know, being a black man, blah, 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 I shouldn't have love for the country. And there was a time where I didn't have 
love for the country, you know what I mean? Um, and I kind of don't, you know, I, I have love for what God is my circumstances, you know what I mean? And I'm thankful, but I don't, I don't have any illusions. You don't have to. So I think, I think that's the big trap that people fall into. Um, because the fact of the matter is, is like every, every quote unquote country is corrupt. You know what I mean? Every country is corrupt. Um, but in regards of being, being thankful for, you know, your family, yeah, praise God. You know what I mean? Um, and like in my case, it's like, you know, I wish my family, my people, <laughs> whatever, I wish they would do better and just embracing what I think is what God has called us to do. But am I going to, you know, full circle, am I going to walk? <laughs> you know what I mean? Am I going to do the walk? So I'm just choosing to do the walk, right? This is just like, people can say whatever, but you know, I'm just, I'm comfortable in my skin. And part of that is like, I'm an African-American, right? I'm not Nigerian. I'm not Ghanaian. I'm not Jamaican. You know what I mean? Uh, that's, that's what I am. And for better or for worse. So that's, yeah. that, that's the secret. Just get into it for better or for worse. Find the truth, stay honest, stay humble, right? When you want to make it something else, Right. That's the problem with with the left or the right. The left wants to make it be like, you know, demonizing, demonizing it. And like, but, but the problem is like, there's nothing perfect. It's kind of like I was saying last week. It's like, yeah, stuff happens. There's nothing perfect. Anyone who's like this and that, these people who with their, um, you know, their critical approach to all this stuff. It's like, shut up, man. You know, like this is so unreal. Sure. It, like what what country do you know of? that hasn't committed some sort of atrocity and hasn't whatever. It's like, if you're a Christian, it doesn't exist. Every single country nation has trampled on innocent blood. That, that's, that's why we need a savior. That's why Achilleasm is wrong. That's why there's utopianism is wrong, right? But on the other hand, when people want to make it be like, you know. Love it or leave it. Love it or leave it, an American South is perfect soil for orthodoxy, blah, blah, blah. It's like, man, that's all hogwash too. Because the fact of the matter is, is people tend to want to project whatever they got going on and it distorts things. So let's just be honest. And we don't have to make it one way or the other. You know what I mean? I know so many Serbs who are like, yeah, you know, they're proud, they love being Serbian, blah, 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 but they're not. They don't have any illusions about like, some sort of immaculate experience of being Serbian. I'm, sh I'm sure there's those people who, are, who, who do, but those people tend to not be honest. You know what I mean? That's for any culture or people group. You know? it's, it's interesting um, because, and I'm, I'm Andrew, so I'm going to talk like this and I don't care, but it's interesting as you see people write Captain America, like it's really interesting to see like what they, they emphasize. Project. What's that? Like they project whatever they're thinking on. So yeah, the, and that, and it, it, it also is like, because um, I have read a good portion of his comics and I'm working on filling in those gaps, but as counterculture, the rise of counterculture, you know, different writers have him siding with the establishment versus the people challenging the establishment. Um, then not only that, but like at a certain point, like he's like, you know, there's there's this whole like part of his mythos is that he come or part of his story is that he um, comes out of the ice and he's woken up to a different world, a world that's not so simple anymore. And um, one of the things that people talk about all the time is like, how can you stand for America when America stands for all this oppression and blah, blah, blah. And there's actually, I think, in Born Again, uh, the Daredevil run by uh, Frank Miller um, and. Uh, of course. Amen, truly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a part where Captain America is involved and he's like saying there's one of my favorite panels of all time where he's touching, he's standing there with like his head hanged. He's touching the American flag. He's like, I did it for the dream. And it's like, it's really interesting to look at because I, I am somewhat patriotic. I recognize that America has its flaws without a doubt. And like horrendously ungodly, especially at this moment, it's, it is, you know it is what it is but at the same time if we can just ignore 
for like or if we can choose to look at certain aspects of what 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 can be taken away from what the american dream is supposed to be there are some things in there that can be like really appreciated and loved and like um it's an illusion it's a lie it's a country built by masons blah blah or bricklayer sorry rather it, it's 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 not what it's supposed to be it's babylon and by a protestant um pastor he actually said like what's it like to call babylon home and i was like man that's actually like a really interesting thought because i i essentially do kind of call babylon home like i i love apple pie like i love america i love the fourth mm-hmm. of july i i for the most part i really like our culture, especially a couple decades past, blah, blah, blah. I think it's really interesting. It's nowhere near perfect, but I don't really want to be Serbian. I don't really want to be Russian. And I don't really want to be Greek because I'm not those things. Like that's like, like father said, it's, it's authentic. I got to be authentic. Like I'm an American. My, my lens is through an American lens and that's extremely complicated. And I think overall the legacy of America is not one of good, but it is like there are notions of goodness that you can appreciate. Like there are well, no- maybe the maybe the biggest thing to appreciate is I mean, and I think I think this is true. I mean, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but in terms of places where orthodoxy is growing the most and the fastest, it's America right now. We have it's saints. North America, certainly. We have saints. We have like a good amount of saints too. Like listen, yeah, the mother yeah. of God of Iron is here. This yep. is, I mean, this, this is, uh, if, if anything, as an Orthodox person who is an American at this moment, I think there's a lot to be proud like, of America for. You know, because I think the thing is, again, let, let's, let me fail like I always do and try to put it in a proper context, okay? What does America mean in the light of Christ and repentance? Which is hard for us because even Orthodox get it twisted when they say we're a Christian country. Like, I actually resist that. I resist it because it, it makes it harder to do what we're trying to do right now. Amen. Um, and I would just say, America in the light of Christ, Orthodoxy and repentance, it's, it's, an, it's actually turning out to be quite the story, actually. <laughs> and I think, that, I think that is the thing. And I think God... It's not even like, forgive me, I I think God agrees with me. It's like, I think I'm just following what God is laying out. Because again, that whole thing of the mother of God, that miracle working icon is is an American icon. It's not the original icon, but the one here. Like that, like it's, it happened here, right? There's like, that's not some kind of accident, right? And the way that orthodoxy is taking here in America, like that's not an accident. And I would say, forgive me for being so bold. I personally am not an accident. You know what I mean? Duh. I personally, I personally am not an accident. Like, I look at my life and I go, like, I'm just, you know, I'm, you know, I left today. I'm just like so thankful for my family, so thankful for the life God's given me. It's not an accident, you know what I mean? And for me, for better or for worse, it's like the church is my life. And I don't think anyone's gonna accuse me of trying to be a Serbian or a Russian or whatever. No one's gonna accuse me of that, you know what I mean? So if nothing else, I'm just trying to say to people, like we can be authentically Orthodox because we can authentically love Christ and want to repent of who we've been and yeah. i think that's the story of america you know what i mean what does it mean well it could be let's put it that way it could be the story of america of what does it mean to repent of these things and turn to god because god and god has a there's a good potential in christ for every individual human being including hitler including anton levey just like there's a there's a good intention for every nation if they want it yeah what am i talking about Nineveh, day before yesterday, feast day of, of the prophet Jonah. Nineveh. Yep. yep. Nineveh. Nineveh repented. You know what I'm saying? So I think I think this is the thing to to take a hold of. And and I would just say this, whatever. Um, 
for me personally, there was two characters, you know, this is getting my own, my own uh, kind of like pop culture thing, but, you know, looking back in my life long before Orthodox, like there's these characters that help me formulate and begin to kind of like articulate what does it mean to turn your back on uh, your quote unquote people or where you come from for the sake of the truth. Right. And I'm not talking about this or just being quote unquote black or American, whatever, but this concept, right? I read these, there's these two fantasy heroes. One was Elric of Melabone, and another one was Drizzt du Orden. Oh, I knew. Them. I knew. Like reading those characters, it just because what do you do when when you your conscience is awakened in such a way where you're like, it I it doesn't matter what everyone tells me I should be, how I should act, what I should do. I know that this is right and good. And this is true. Absolutely. And that is, to, to me, like, that is the, the light on the hill, if that makes sense what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I think that is the thing for all of us as Americans who have become Orthodox. Because one of the things that happens, there was a man I met, um, he, he's a deacon now great great guy and he was he's great because he was saying to me at one point he's like you know um i used to have a certain kind of politic when i was an evangelical and i was really bought into the idea that a certain nation in the near east is like a chosen thing you know what i mean and he was like when i became orthodox i had to flip that because i realized that this other opposing nation was filled with Orthodox Christians. And I had thought they, was all, they were all Muslims, blah, blah, blah. If you can read between the lines what I'm saying. And I was like, man, praise God. Because up until that point, I hadn't really met any Orthodox who had my experience. And what I mean by that is not being black, not being whatever, but just seeing a truth and being like, I'm gonna follow this truth even though people say I shouldn't. Absolutely. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and if you're an American Orthodox, that's what you got to do, because like, forgive me, this is where I, I, I don't see eye to eye on certain people, that will, I'll see eye to eye on, on other things. It's like, I, I don't think it's correct to do, to go overboard with the whole Patriot thing, like American Orthodox, you know? and I, I'll say why, because it cuts out the place where we actually need to repent. Yes. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And, and repentance that... doesn't mean... Like my repentance doesn't mean I hate myself. It's actually quite the opposite. Like if I truly have love for myself and I have value for the life God's given me, I'm going to repent, which means I have to like lay everything in front of God and be like, what can you baptize? And whatever you can't, I have to get rid of. Yeah. Which brings us full circle to what I was saying earlier about the ego death and like people just wanting to be like, they want to, you know, double down and be like, no, I'm right on this thing. It's just like, you're not leaving any room for God and for change. You're like, you're walking around, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver you from this body of death. It's like, you've got this stinking corpse that you're just wrapping yourself into. It's just like, you don't understand how filthy and, and, and disgusting it is. But just, but because it's your rotting, filthy corpse, you don't want to let it go. And I just, yeah. just let, it, let it go. Um, that was all really good, Father. And, uh, Ice T is the narrator for the Forgotten Realms Dark Dark Elf trilogy on audio. Ice T, like the Ice T, the Ice T. Yeah, for real. You're Wait, he re he re he re he's the re person who There's reads no it. No way. No, I I. That's hilarious. Yeah, I I would. Or is it do or? Yeah, the Dark Elf There's trilogy. No way. Yeah, wow. I would put. That's five almost up. as good as. Um, Edward James, um, almost, almost Edward James, almost. No, no, no. Um, forgive me. Or, uh, 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 don't don't do that. I almost called him James James Earl James Earl, Earl Ray. Jones. James Earl That's Jones. I almost, almost James called him Earl Jones. Doing the Bible. Doing the Bible. Oh yeah, that's a that's incredible. That's incredible. Wow. <laughs> Ice tea, really? Uh, wow. not, this, not this version. <laughs> there is one there is one i almost guarantee it i'm gonna i might take this back but um uh so anyway is great here's ice tea narrating dungeons and dragon books for nerds yep 
Uh, yeah, he does it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love it, man. I think it's great. The yeah. legend, the legend of uh, maybe that's not, maybe that's not this one. The legend of dressed. Yeah, that's read by Ice T. Uh, comrade at odds. Comrades at odds. I don't know what part of the. Maybe it's not the Dark Elf trilogy, but it is Forgotten Realms. Like, and it's by R.A. Salvatore, which is yeah, the hilarious. Yeah. Dude, so that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think that's a really good spot to end with that. Yeah, so, sure. No, I. Yeah, I'm not going to add on anything that Father said because I think that it that was said. I was thinking that was said well. Um, but I mean, Father Cosmos says all the time Australia hasn't had a saint. Like, you know, not yet. And America has had a good amount. He's like, you know, Elder Ephraim of Arizona did like 14 monasteries here, like built like more than that. what's that? I think more than that. Oh, then yeah. Elder Ephraim built a lot of monasteries here, like started a lot of monasteries here. And um, you know, we have uh Blessed Seraphim Rose, you know, he's you know, he's loved the world over. So Saint John of Saint John of San Francisco, Saint Herman of Alaska. You can claim Saint Nikolai. Saint Nikolai Bevovich. Yeah. What about what about Saint Sophroni? Didn't he have some connection to the U.S.? No. Or no, am I thinking? I'm, I think I'm thinking of Saint Nikolai Velimirovich. Yes, yeah, I East think East. I am. Yeah. Okay. So, go America. Um, <laughs> we have uh, the pod, We have the podcast playlist on Spotify. Royal Path Music. If we talk about music, so I guess Pantera is going on there um is going to go on the playlist i will be very i will be very selective about what music i put on there you better believe walk is on there but i'll pick like two other songs i'm going to be Pro Max is going to be on there Pro Max, yep. is, on Pro there. Max is on there yeah, yeah. Pro Max is on there. um oh bad brains you mentioned bad brains that would be good yeah bad brains is good um and then we have our merch store royal pass yeah. I can never dot store royal path dot store. It's so easy, but I can never so remember. easy. I know. Yeah. Um, and then uh please feel free to keep emailing me. I am getting them. I'm enjoying you need them. to give your email because people oh, are asking right. what is that's your email. Right. That's right, that's right. Thank you, Cipri. Thank you, Cyprian. Andrew at royalpath.net. Work dot network. Oh, okay. There you go. So I don't know. Again, you put it in the description link or something. Is that what people? I can't. I can't. I don't think I can put email addresses in there. Oh, it it, it right scrubs them. It scrubs them. Yeah. yeah. I kept trying to put it in the comments. It so is Andrew, Andrew at royalpath.network. Boom. Andrew at royalpath.network. Please reach out to me. If you, if you feel like, again, I I'm, I'm thinking about maybe sending confirmation emails because sometimes people aren't sure. I should probably just do. Hey, I got your I got your question. It'll be let at a, read at a later time. Blah, put blah, an blah. auto responder. Go okay, into your settings you and put an auto responder. Hey, I got your email. Thanks. Whatever you know. got your email. You got the correct address. We will address it at a later time. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable talking about this. Blah blah blah. This is a question for Father Terrible. I'll be sure and ask it on the show. There you go. Um, and we still got more we could have done tonight, but I liked where this episode went. But blah blah blah. So anyway, um, I think that's it. And thank you. Thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye.